Kevin Madden will go to the line for North Carolina. Madden's got 10 points here today, but these are the biggest points he's going to be shooting all day. He's been in a little pain today. He's had some problems with his ankle, it seems. He's a spirited kid also. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of spirit. He shot well yesterday in practice on a free throw line. I was observing him, and he had a good touch yesterday. But this is today. <laughs> ah. There wasn't a sellout crowd there watching him do that yesterday, but just the same. Looks like he's just as easy. Look at the free throw line. 75% versus 54%. Remember, they lost two heartbreakers by one and two last year to Georgetown, and they missed 35 free throws. If they lose today, it is again because of the free throw. 92 to 91 is the score. The Tar Heels are back on top, and we have less than 30 seconds left. Jimmy Beheim's going to let him play. They force it inside. The foul is called against Syracuse. Earl Duncan. Reaching for the loose ball, Earl Duncan committed the foul. You know, everybody probably is wondering why no timeout by Syracuse. We see the ball come loose. Jared wrapping inside. Timmy Higgins jumps in on a call. But, you know, everybody wondering why no timeout. I want to stress, he has no more timeouts left. He has exhausted all his timeouts. In overtime, you get one more timeout, and they use for that. And this is a man that Jimmy Beheim does not want to see throwing free throws for Carolina. He was an 84% shooter last year on a free throw line out of Carlisle, PA, where Billy Owens, heading for Syracuse, could break his all-time record as they go for an unprecedented fourth state championship, Carlisle, coached by his dad, Dave. Remember this, Syracuse with a three-point deficit, they have a chance, they have a chance to tie the game. takes the timeout with a three-point lead, 94 to 91, and 21 seconds left. It's going to be essential for Dean Smith now during that timeout, and that's why he's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm on the sideline and got the Ziggy <laughs> as a coach. I know right now he's got to think a little bit about Rose shooting that three-point shot. Matt Rowe is an outstanding long-range shooter. Don't forget CFA football here tonight on ESPN. Number eight, Clemson, facing number 12, South Carolina, live at 7.30. We will follow that up as part of our doubleheader as Air Force faces Hawaii from Honolulu and Aloha Stadium. Stay tuned for college football on ESPN. What a tremendous opener. Anytime you put these schools against each other, you're looking at class, you're looking at solid players, solid coaching. And I know we hear about J.R. Reed not being here, but John, I told you yesterday, I said in a one-game shot, don't be shocked. You can't. I was quoted in today's paper here as I spoke at the banquet yesterday. I told those 1,200 and I said to Jimmy Bayheim, you never could count out Michelangelo, that man, whenever it's that one-game situation, and he's got this club really ready to play today. We see Matt Rowe comes in for the Syracuse Orangemen. That, of course, because the Orangemen will be looking to hit that three-point shot. Rowe has hit three of them today already. And Gino Smith trying to match up. They're going to be in a little zone trap to let him take some time off the clock. See, Ranzino's chasing Rowe. Good adjustment by North Carolina rather than let him step up into the zone. Did they trap him? Duncan with the ball. Sherman Douglas from three. Let's it fly. It will not drop. Matt Rowe comes up with the ball, and he's fouled by Chilka. That turned out to be a good foul. I'll tell you why. He's got to convert the two to get it to one, and now you have possession of the ball, and if you can't inbounds the basketball, you don't deserve to win. If I were Dean Smith, I'd get a timeout to try and talk to them what to do. I think he is. the lineup for Syracuse. Well, he's going to, he may signal a timeout if he converts both. Hughes comes in, of course, for rebounding purposes, but this is something we talked about last year during the NCAA that Matt Rowe and someone perhaps in situations like this foul a guy if they have to hit three points to win the game. I really believe in that strategy. I think a lot of coaches are afraid about the inbounds in the basketball, but my feeling is too many bad things have to happen. They not only have to force the turnover, they got to convert the turnover. And I really think if you can't inbounds the ball, you don't deserve to win. Baldy's the favorite eating a place of mine up in Syracuse if they were to lose. Rowe hits the first one and pulls Syracuse within two. So now 
Howdy Orange could tie, even if he misses this one. Remember, North Carolina had a lot of difficulty in bouncing the ball earlier. Number 30, Derek Brower. Derek Brower comes in to Sherman Douglas, and again, it's obvious that Jimmy Beheim wants his big man in there for the rebound. Should there be one? He talked at halftime that it wasn't over when they were down 11 with their ability to score, especially from three-point range. I think he tried to miss that. Yeah, I think so. Ron Cycler looked like he was totally disappointed. Fox it's all over. Showtime. It's celebration time on Franklin Street, Chapel Hill, 612 for Dino. Look at this win. Oh, J.R. Reed, you're missing a party, big fella. The North Carolina Tarios have pulled out the win. 96 to 93 is the final in overtime. We are done here in Springfield. We want to go back to 